this video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Hey, what's up? In today's video, I will show you how to create a magical force field protecting a castle in Adobe After Effects. This is inspired on the movie Ready Player One, where they are using the force field in the game to protect the castle. So I'm going to be creating something similar in today's video tutorial using Adobe After Effects. So the first thing that we will need is our footage. And sometimes footage is pretty hard to get, especially if you want something very specific. For example, a robot holding a pug dog. Yeah, if you want that, you can actually find it at the website of today's video sponsor, storyblocks.com. Storyblocks is actually a library where you can find royalty-free footage, also templates, sound effects, imagery, anything you might need to enhance your video and make it look a lot more professional, engaging, and less time. The cool thing is that you can use these videos for anything, also for your professional work in commercials, for example. They also have multiple subscription packages so anyone can find find what they want. If you want to find out more, definitely follow the link in the description below, storyblocks.com slash Ines. Hey, it's me again, editor. Did you know that Storyblocks also has a Premiere Pro plugin? With this plugin, you can, for example, search a sunset straight into Premiere Pro. This saves you a lot of time. This comes for free when you have a license. Enjoy the sunset. So as they are today's video sponsor, I'm going to use their library to find myself some footage. And I actually already searched a little bit, but if you search for a castle after searching a little bit around, you will come with a lot of options actually that you can use to protect your uh, force field on. So we're going to apply some visual effects on already existing footage. And so the footage that I ended up using is this one right here. This is the Mont Saint-Michel, uh, which is a famous island pretty close by actually. Um, in Normandy. So that's actually next to Belgium where I'm from and it just looks so cool and it would be really cool to have like a force field protecting it from all kinds of evil attacking it. So let's go ahead and download this in 4k resolution and then in Adobe After Effects I'm going to be importing this footage. I'm also going to drag it into a new composition and let's take a look at it. So this looks pretty cool and the duration is also perfect so I'm not going to change too much. I'm also going to add the mocha effect now. So I'm going to the beginning of my timeline, hold control space to bring up console effects. If you don't have this, um, this is exactly the same as the effects and presets right here. It just functions a lot faster and it's also free. So I would highly recommend everyone using this. And here I'm going to apply mocha AE. Once you've applied that, we're going to click on the logo and it's going to start up mocha AE. What we want to do here is just track the position and scale of our castle so it actually will look like the force field is tracked to it. So we're going to use the X-Spline tool and we're going to just take a little bit of detail off this island and then right click to make your selection final and just track it forward. That's all we have to do. Once that's done, we can close Mocha and save all the changes. We're going to right click here and create a new null object. We're going to rename this track. Then we go back to our footage, go over to the track data and create track data, click OK. Then we're going to change the export options to transform. We're going to select the track null that we just created and we're going to apply the export. So now we can see that all the tracking data is applied to this null and the null should stick perfectly to our castle. So this is great for later on. So now we're going to create a texture that we're going to animate in Adobe After Effects that we're then going to use for the spherical um, force field that we're going to place on top of this. So we're going to create a new composition and make this 2500 by 2500 or smaller if your computer can't handle that. Lower resolution isn't going to change too much. We're going to name this texture force field. In here, we're going to right click and create a new solid layer. And this is going to be fractal noise. So for the people that already know me, we use fractal noise a bunch of time. It's a super powerful effect. So I'm going to apply this to my solid layer here and I'm going to change it up a little bit so it might look like a force field. Um, for the force field, I want it actually to move up a little bit, but not too fast, uh, just so there is some motion. So I'm going to open up the transform tab already and click on the stopwatch for the offset turbulence. And then I'm going all the way till the end. And for the last uh, setting here, so we have X and Y, we're going to 
to bring this up so it's actually moving up, we're going to set this to minus 1000, for example. So now if we play this, we're going to see that it's slowly moving up and we can completely customize um, the speed ourselves. So we're going to just set it maybe to minus 2000 instead of 1000 and this is going to go slightly faster. But still, it looks pretty static. Um, the interior or the actual feel, the force isn't really moving. So to do that, we're going to hold Alt and click on the stopwatch for the evolution and write a simple expression, which is time times 250. And there we go. Now we're going to have some animation in this as well. So you can see now everything is dancing around a little bit. So if you want to have it go faster, just increase the numbers. And if you want it to go slower, decrease the numbers, pretty straightforward stuff. Now it's time to design it out a little bit. So we're going over to fractal type and change it to a, uh, let's say cloudy. And we're going over to soft linear and set this to spline and maybe invert this. So now we have um, a different look, something a little bit more original. And this looks pretty cool actually. We can also go over to the scale and change the scale to something like 50. And if you want to build it out even more complex with more variations, you can also duplicate this and build a few fractal noises on top of each other. But before we do that, you can also play with the complexity right here. If you're going to double this, you're going to see a lot more detail going on. And if you lower this, you're going to see less detail. So this is completely up to you. I think something like four should be working fine. Then I'm going to duplicate this fractal noise, increase the scale this time. So go over to transform, set it to 150. And this time we're going to set it maybe to multiply. And so if we invert it again, we are going to get different results. So I like this result actually. So let's see what we have here. And you can also play here with different uh, looks. Also make sure that we don't allow HDR results. So I'm going to clip it and also right here, clip it. But apart from that, I really love this look. So let's say that this will be um, the texture for our force field. Let's go back to the project manager and also make sure that we're working not in linear and in 32 bits per channel. Awesome. Let's go back to our castle now and let's import our texture. And on this texture, we're going to apply the CC sphere effect. That's going to turn this into a sphere. But as you can see, it looks um, pretty um, basic at the moment. So uh, what we can do is now parent this to the track and you're going to see that it's now moving along with our footage um, in in 3D depth, it's also scaling up towards the camera once we get closer to this um, castle, so that's great. If you want to cut off the bottom part here, you can always go into the texture path here, right click, create a new solid and turn this into black. We're going to scale it up a little bit just so we can uh, apply some stuff later on and place this just a little bit on top. Now, if we're going to use a fractal noise as an alpha mat, it's just going to show whatever this mask is um, covering. So that's only this part here. And if we go back, we should see that the bottom part starts to get cut off. So something like this should be perfect. Now we can set the blending mode to screen and we're getting something like this. Another important thing is to have a little bit of feather here. And to do that, we're actually going to bring it back a little bit down. Double click on the mask here and double click on the mask, bring it up and then press F on the keyboard to feather it out a little bit. And that way we get a little bit of a softer edge. If you want, you can even add a roughen edges effect to this. And that's going to spice things up a little bit more, uh, maybe increasing the complexity and lowering the sharpness to comma five. And having more feather is going to roughen up the edges out here a little bit. So now we get something like this and it blends a little bit better. So set the blending mode to normal for a second here, and we're going to play with the shading options right here. So for the ambient, we can set this to zero. The diffuse, uh, we can leave it for what it is, and the roughness, we can play with that if you want to create some highlights. I'm actually going to leave it rather low, and for the metallicness, uh, let's also leave this low. Reflectiveness, you can increase that to get a little bit of detail here back. Um, but the most important thing here is actually to go over to um, the light and to rotate the light until we only cover the edge here. So we're going to lower the height. There we go and increase the brightness. And so now we only have like the rim of um, the of that. Yeah, of the sphere lit. The only problem is that the other side is not lit. So we're going to have to duplicate this and now shift this light over to the other side. And maybe duplicate it once more and shift the light over to the top. 
And so now if you're going to change these to a blending mode of screen, we're going to see that the outer circle is pretty lit and pretty obvious, but the inner circle isn't that very obvious and you do see some details still in there. So that's great. We can duplicate it one more time and solo this for now and set the shading here to diffuse, well, ambient to 100. And that's just going to make it completely lit. We need that for later. And then we're also going to apply a tint effect to this layer. And we're going to change the black to 50% black. You can also see that the background didn't change with it. And that's because there is no background. So we need to add a solid composite effect here. Bring this on top of the uh, tint and change the color to black. That's going to create a black background. Um, but now because we turned it into 50% gray, we're going to see a perfect 50% uh, gray um, background right here. All right. Uh, we're going to now pre-compose this. So go to layer and pre-compose this layer, move all the attributes. And this is going to be our displacement map. So we are creating a displacement map just to have a little bit more life in our footage. And it's actually going to deform our castle a little bit. And that's really going to make it magical. So that's going to change the realism of this shot a little bit. So we can disable this. We don't need to see this, but we have to create a new adjustment layer, which is going to be our displacement. So we're going to rename this and then we're going to add a displacement map effect to it. We're going to now change this to the displacement map texture that we just created. And if we're going to increase the horizontal and vertical, we're going to see some uh, distortion, especially when it's playing. So it's a big difference when we don't have this enabled or we have this enabled. Really, really cool. So now for the color, we can actually uh, you combine all these textures into one. So we're going to layer pre-compose this. And this is going to be our texture uh, sphere force field and now here we're going to also add a solid composite and also turn this black and set the blending mode back to screen now parent this once again to the track and now we can add some color in here so for the color i'm going to use the color vibrance which is also for free yeah it just gives it a lot more vibrant colors instead of just uh, tweaking it yourself so you can completely choose how you color this i just really like how uh, vibrance works here so you can go for a little bit of a purple look or a blue look um yeah whatever floats your boat. So now we have something like this. This looks super dope. Um, if you want, you can also add a little bit of turbulence displacement to this uh, sphere. So the edges are not as perfect. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to add a turbulence displace effect. I'm going to hold alt on the stopwatch and click time times to 50 also. So now we have some animation in there. The size, I'm going to turn it down to 25 and the amount, turn it down to 25 as well. Maybe add some complexity of four and maybe even the amount lower to something like 10. Very subtle, but you're going to see now that the edges are also animating with uh, the rest of it. If you want, you can also jump back once again in this clip here. And you can also add a channel blur to all of these layers and just increase the alpha blurness a little bit. That's going to soften the edge here. So we can copy this effect and paste it on all of these. And now we get softer edges on our sphere. Then apart from that, we can go back to our footage, create a new adjustment layer on top of our footage, color correct footage. And we're going to add a curves and a tint here. So for the tint, I'm just going to change it to 25% so it doesn't affect it too much. Just desaturating the image a little bit. And also I want to darken this shot quite a bit so the force field really comes out nicely. We can also use a ellipse tool here. We're going to create an ellipse right here like this. And then subtract this instead of add, press F on the keyboard and feather it a little bit. So it looks like the force field is at least casting some type of reflection. We can duplicate this and then we're going back to the mask and set it now to add and reset the curves and also take away the tint and maybe go to the blue channel and just increase the blue, go to the green channel and decrease or increase actually the green. So we get some sign looking colors and maybe decrease the reds just a touch. You can also go to RGB and just increase the overall brightness. So we get the reflections from our force field. Again, you can play a little bit more with the feather here if you're not completely satisfied. And you can also open up the mask expansion to play with the expansion here. You can also duplicate your force field and go over to the pen behind tool and move the anchor point here to the bottom and then go back to your selection tool and now just flip over 
the portal. So it looks like it's actually casting a reflection in the water. And we can play around a little bit with the opacity just to make it softer a little bit and also add a fast box blur. Now there is one more thing that I would like to do and is go back to my force field, make sure that I'm at the right one and, and I'm going to apply the perfect glow effect right here. So now if I increase the radius a little bit and increase the intensity, we're going to get some nice glows out here. If you want different colors, you just go back to VC Color Vibrance and change it a little bit. So now the last thing that we need to do is just animate this force field to come up so it's actually protecting it from an attack. And to do that, we just need to animate it right here. So we're going to press M on the keyboard for this mask and create a keyframe for the mask path. Move this over to something like 100. And all we need to do is take these top parts, bring them down. And that's going to animate it up. And by the way, if you want to keep your reflections as is, we can always duplicate our original footage and bring it all the way up here. Then play with the curves to just eliminate or just make the bottom part a little bit more black and everything else white. You can add a tint effect here. And now we can set this to a luma mat. So make sure it's on top of your texture. Luma mat, and now it's only going to show the reflections on the places that aren't dark. You can always go back here and darken it up even more. And there we go. So now we have a nice reflection that isn't uh, casting any reflections on the actual landscape. All right, so now that we have this entire setup already, let's find a little bit more stuff on story blocks to make our shot even more appealing. Maybe some attacks, maybe some flares. I'm not sure. Let's go and search. So I'm going to use this flare maybe as the core of the force field. So that's going to energize the force field or be the magic that is creating it. So I'm going to download that. Then we're going to import these files in Adobe After Effects. We can always add these clips to their own folder. And then I'm going to start importing these. Set it to a blending mode of screen. Also go to the beginning of your timeline and add it to the track. And then make it smaller. And maybe we're going to start it from this tower. Okay. And we can actually scale it up. So we can press S on the keyboard and create a keyframe. Move it one second in time and then set it to zero. Then right click here, keyframe assistance, easy ease. And we're going to just ram this a little bit. So now we just have a uh, smooth scale up of this flare, which is using, uh, well, actually projecting the force field around it. So maybe take a little bit longer. And we're also going to add an exposure effect to this, uh, just so we can play a little bit with the intensity here or make it look like it's um, being uh, changed. So we're going to hold Alt and click on the stopwatch, wiggle times open um, parentheses, three comma 0.5, or let's say 0.5. There we go. And now it should actually animate itself uh, randomly a little bit. And now it's looking like it's actually flickering. You can always add a curves as well to this to give it more contrast. And we can also go into the green channel and maybe lower the green a little bit. So we are getting more, um, well, we're working more towards the same color that we already have here. We're going to place it like right here. So that does enhance the shot. Now we have this one right here. This is going to be like a magical attack. So we can right click time, time stretch 50 to speed it up twice. And like just when it appears, we're going to have this impact here. Change the blending mode to screen. Maybe impact comes like right here. Also scale it down quite a bit. We have a small impact. And maybe we can trim a little bit of the beginning so we don't really see that inner core. We just immediately go to the, to the burst, to the explosion. We can also add a tint effect to this. 
And now we're going to add VC Color Vibrance to give it a color. And then also add Perfect Glow to add some glow to this. So we actually have some magic and set it to something like 20. On the same moment that we have this, we can also add some sparks. So let's add a spark here. Change the blending mode to screen. And move the spark right here. Also move the anchor point to the center point of the spark. And like that, we are getting a nice combination of these two, ele uh, these two elements. We're also going to scale this um, down quite a bit. This is way too much particle. And there we go. You can have another one just before it, a little bit closer to the impact and also scale it down. Maybe have one here, blending mode screen. And maybe rotate it a little bit so it looks like it comes from an angle. So this is a really fun and interesting way of using stock footage and even applying VFX to it to still create your own unique piece, but yeah, having a lot more options with footage that you're using and having a lot more interesting footage to work with in the first place. like to know how to create visual effects as if they came straight out of your favorite Hollywood movies, check out the link in the description below. We're opening our doors for a limited time only, so if you would like to become a student of mine and learn visual effects the right way, this might be your chance. And we are currently also offering an early bird discount for anyone who decides quickly. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Definitely go and check out Storyblocks with the link in the description below. And I hope to see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. And apart from that, I'm going to leave you with another video of mine right here so you can continue your epic VFX journey. And I'll see you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos.